I'm going to start off, you know, this, the, why are we having this emergency broadcast? Because democracy is under attack. Um, and by that, I mean, there is a war raging. Um, it's a meme war and it's about Bernie Sanders mittens. And honestly, I just wanted to like have some uh, fun, uh, less uh, stressful content, more carefree content. And Bernie and mittens are both adorable. And then you combine them and it's really magic. So First, I'm going to ground this in some textual analysis. So we're going to do some exegesis first. And there's an article by Naomi Klein, and we should read that. I think it'll be a very important textual grounding. Um, can everyone see this? It's called The Meaning of the Mittens, Five Possibilities. Uh, and this was at The Intercept. And Brianna Joy Gray, of course, was a political editor, a senior political editor at The Intercept. Is that senior politics editor. Senior politics editor. So here we go. Pity the art directors, the stylists, and the stage managers. So much effort, taste, strategy, and money went into planning the semiotics of Joe Biden's inauguration. The precise shade of Kamala Harris's royal purple, screw you Vogue, and your sloppy cover. The selection of a smallish made in New York brand to dress Jill Biden in ocean blue, way to support small businesses in the pandemic. The sheer weight of Lady Gaga's gold dove brooch, the Hunger Games fun of it. And yet it was all for naught because in a sea of exquisitely matching face masks, Bernie Sanders' ratty old mittens upstaged them all, instantly becoming the most discussed, delighted in, and deranged visual message of the historic occasion. What should we make of this? Why did so many millions connect to whatever language the mittens were speaking? Was it pandemic delirium? All of us projecting our social isolation into the most isolated person in the crowd? Was it sexism and racism, the Bernie bros once again failing to acknowledge the subversive messages expressed in the fashion choices of glass ceiling shattering women? Was it, as a friend just texted as I type these words, the world's secret wish that Bernie was our president? What is the meaning, the mythology of it all? As with so much else related to this new administration, it's too soon to tell what follows are five possibilities. Okay. The mittens as reverse judgment. Much of the media focus has been on the mittens themselves, their 1970s cross-country ski anti-style, their handmadeness in a world of mass manufacturing, their haphazardness, and the fact that Bernie clearly didn't spare a single brain cell deciding to wear them beyond it's cold, these are warm. Just as important, however, is the posture of the mitten wearer, the slouch, the crossed arms, the physical isolation from the crowd. The effect is not of a person left out as... as at a party, but rather, let's be honest, of a person who has no interest in joining. At an event that was, above all, a show of cross-party un of cross partisan unity, Bernie's mitten stood in for everyone who has never been included in that elite manufactured consensus. It wasn't a boycott of the occasion itself. Nobody wanted Trump out more than Bernie, but it expressed an unequivocal reservation of judgment about what was coming. Those crossed arms were the mitten saying, let's see what you actually do, and then we can talk about unity. Two. The mittens as warning. But it was more than that. There was also, if you look closely, a woolen warning. The world went nuts for Bernie's sullen inauguration posture because he was keeping alive the hope that there is still moral opposition to concentrated power and money in the United States at a time when we need it more than ever. In that moment, Bernie's crossed arms and sartorial dissonance seemed to be saying, do not cross us. If, after all the hoopla, the Biden-Harris administration doesn't deliver transformational action for a nation and a planet in agony, there will be consequences. And unlike during the Obama years, those consequences won't take years because the revolutionary spirit is already on the inside and it's wearing mittens. The mittens as the conscience of liberals. Bernie's mittens have not only been an obsession among the senator's base, those of us who had dearly hoped to see that slab of scratchy wool placed over a Bible earlier this week. I don't know if it would have been a Bible. We'll get back to that. They have <laughs> also been a surprising hit among liberals. Many of the same liberals who spent the primaries publicly gagging over the prospect of a President Sanders. So shouty, so pointy, so angry. And yet here they are forwarding mitten memes and sharing delightful stories about how the gloves were handmade by a teacher, crafty, or that time Bernie lent them to a chilly healthcare worker, a hand warming tale. What's up with that. Why is Bernie the dangerous socialist suddenly everyone's lovable grandpa? On one level, simple enough. Even as chair of the Senate Budget Committee, Sanders is far less of a threat to them than he was as a president can presidential candidate running on a promise to redistribute wealth and take the profit motive out of health care. Put another way for the elite of the Democratic Party, it's easy to love Bernie when he's redistributing handmade mittens so long as he keeps his mitts off their donors' billions. 
In some ways, it's even useful to tolerate a scruffy wing of the party precisely because the leadership is so cut off from its working class base. In that context, publicly embracing Bernie at this late date plays a role similar to the various pseudo populist primary season stunts like very publicly eating fried foods you hate or wearing regular people clothing, which brings us to a related mitten meaning. In liberal media outlets, inauguration week marked a giddy return to the Obama era of covering the first family as Davos class celebrities. Does Biden's Peloton bike present an actual present a security risk? Who dressed Joe Biden? Have you seen Kamala's sister's badass feminist sweatshirts? Oh my God. Let me open that for later. So I don't forget. <sighs> Trigger warning. This strand of politician as lifestyle coverage had been largely dormant during the Trump era. Sure, the White House was filled with rich and thin people wearing and consuming expensive and desirable things, but they were proto fascists and shameless grifters. So dwelling too much on Melania's capes and Ivanka's jewelry was a bad look. That's all over now. And yet nagging PR concerns remain. We are, after all, in a global pandemic and hunger is soaring, even if the ultra rich have vastly increased their wealth during this period of mass deaths. Enter the mittens. It's clear that some people in the upper reaches of the Democratic Party understand that if they are going to bask in a glamorous return to neoliberal normal, there needs to be some nod to reality. The fact that Bernie was there in his duffel coat and mittens and disposable mask was quickly adopted as that nod. But don't be fooled because there's another more powerful meaning of the mittens. This is the last possibility, guys. The mitten, the mittens as movement flex. There are the mittens qua mittens, but there are also the mittens qua meme, a supercharging of the mitten symbolism that seemed to occur within seconds of their arrival on the scene. Before Gaga had sung the national anthem and before Biden had sung unity nine times and uniting, uh, had said, sorry, I, I got it. That was a Freudian slip. I wish he had sang, remember, had sung, remember that U-N-I-T-Y by Queen Latifah? <laughs> I could imagine him doing it too, actually. Maybe uh, she had her instead of Jayla. I know, <laughs> but I could imagine him just doing it him on his own. <laughs> but Being too. like, right, Kamala, right? Am I doing this right? We're playing it into the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and before Biden had said <laughs> unity nine times and uniting an additional three times by it, Bernie's mittens were flying around the internet. Within hours, he had been superimposed on the thousand of iconic images spliced into films and was trending everywhere things can trend. It is crucial to understand that this had nothing to do with anything Bernie did other than be Bernie in the only way he knows how. Like so much of his historic 2020 primary campaign, the symbolic power of the mittens was the work of the us in Not Me Us, a decentralized movement of uh, movements that represents thousands of grassroots organizations and tens of millions of voters, and that stands for policies supported by majorities of Democratic voters, according to many polls, but are still rejected by its elite. Medicare for all, a Green New Deal, student debt cancellation, free college, a wealth tax, and more. On Biden's big day, the movement that represents those policies and those values made global meaning out of a pair of old mittens. It did because it could. It was a friendly little flex with not so friendly under with a not so friendly undercurrent. We'll still hear, we're still here. It said, ignore us, and we won't sit nearly so quietly next time. Okay, so a lot of interesting stuff to work with there. Um, what's the? What do you guys think? So let's see. The options are um, the mittens as movement flex, the mittens as street cred, uh, the mittens as the conscience of liberals, the mittens as warning, and the mittens as reserve judgment. What was reserved? I think to, I just think that I'm a visual right. learner. That's I need the to wait look at it. That up again. Me too, actually. That's the waiting and seeing. Like, we'll see. Here, let me open it. Okay. I mean, what's... I do... Okay, reserved judgment means... It's like those crossed arms were saying, were the mitten saying, let's see what you actually do, and then we can talk oh, about unity. I think, I think there's a little bit of that. I think a lot of the left was like they they related to how resigned he seems in that pose like he doesn't really want to be there and none of us want this to be happening and it's like we're with you bernie like this sucks um and so i think the left the left likes it for that reason right right i think the reason the liberals like it are different and evolving okay ooh let's go i think that there are some people who weren't that invested in the whole thing who don't have any antipathy for Bernie, didn't really feel very strongly or start paying attention until the general election. And therefore think of this as like a lovable, cute thing. And just like the fact that Bernie seems unbothered, you know, it's just funny yeah. to see someone who's like unbothered, 
grumpy, detached, above it all. It's just naturally memeable without really having any political valence. But there are a segment of liberals who very much were paying attention during the primary, who are openly antagonistic to Bernie and everything that he stood for, openly mocked his policy pr prescriptions and the idea that we should be fighting for poor people and are now appropriating this meme in an effort mm. to whitewash their own politics and pretend like they have anything to do with the people in the movement that Bernie Sanders represents. She just said that. She said it. You you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. And I do think that's that's true. This is their way of trying to uh, wash their hands. It's a contra <laughs> pilot moment, if you will. Yeah, good luck with the mittens on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good luck. I'll put some Brillo mittens on you guys. Um, but yeah, I think that's true. And uh, it does remind me of uh, it's yeah. Tree Wall says they don't have the right to post Bernie memes. It's true. We should have we should have to approve of them. <laughs> we should look at their bios and their tweets and then we'll, we can say whether or not. And then we just publish them and we say traitor <laughs> or ally, you know, because this is time for unity. Yeah, I was telling you guys before we logged on that um, I noticed that notorious Bernie hater um, Fred G G Gutenberg was uh, posting a version of the meme. Not just any version of the meme, but the one where uh, one where Bernie is sitting next to um, Mr. Rogers. Hmm. So like the nicest man in Congress. Right sitting next to the nicest man on television, being posted by someone who was just virulently pro-Biden, anti-Bernie in the most mean-spirited, aggressive way. And when I pointed that out, he's um, now on a tirade uh, referring to me as a pathetic liar, which is very much in the spirit of right. both Bernie Sanders and Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And he's really challenging the, that Mr. Rogers, won't you be my neighbor? Right. Won't you be my pathetic liar neighbor? Please won't you be, please won't you be my pathetic liar neighbor? <laughs> no. So yeah, I mean, this did definitely give me all the, uh, uh, it did give me a lot of feels, but I do think that that's okay because we were actually there for Bernie. Uh, and uh, Maria, you actually were telling me before the, so that's, what, okay, you think, so what did we just settle on? It's, you said the evolving, it is, it's a washing of their consciences, consciences, conscious, wipe your conscience. For sure, yeah. What is the word? Consciousness. Or conscience, it's conscience, right? Like wipe your, like, that's yeah. your conscience, yeah. It's a way yeah. to, it's a self, it's a patting right. themselves on the back, yeah, washing their hands of it, pretending that they were allies.